how do you get from elementary particles, each of which is absolutely identical to all the others of its type anywhere in the universe, a thing that has no individuality to the richly diverse and individual and complex entities that we see around us and which we are ourselves. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the issues that you raise is, is sometimes we call the problem of free will because as I understand it, science conventionally doesn't like to think about free will. Uh, it, it, it resembles the idea of teleology too much, which I think is a forbidden notion in science. It, you suggest that perhaps the, the principle of indeterminacy, which occurs at the subatomic level, might be related to the free will which we seem to experience and I would presume other animals might experience. Well, I mentioned that. Mm -hmm. uh, I must say my remarks about free will are not the most, uh, are not the place where my uh, knowledge and understanding are best revealed. <laughs> uh -huh. But uh, I don't actually adopt the point of view that uh, our subjective impression of free will, which is a kind of indeterminacy in behavior, comes from uh, quantum mechanical indeterminacy. Mm -hmm. I just mention it as a logical possibility. I say it's much more likely that it stems mainly from other things mm -hmm. and from rather simple things like partial information. Uh, if we look at the, the way the universe behaves, uh, quantum mechanics gives us fundamental unavoidable indeterminacy so that uh, histories, alternative histories of the universe can be assigned probabilities. Sometimes the probabilities are very close to certainties, but they're never really certainties. Mm -hmm. uh, and often the probabilities are quite distributed. As a result, the alternative possible histories of the universe form a kind of branching tree. Yes. Uh, Jorge Luis Borges, in one of his marvelous imaginative short stories, mm -hmm. uh, imagined someone building a model of the alternative branching histories of the universe in the form of a garden of forking paths. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, what that means is that uh, there is fundamental indeterminacy from quantum mechanics. But besides that, there are other sources of effective indeterminacy. A famous one is the phenomenon of chaos, one that's recently become famous. Mm -hmm. Of course, the word chaos is used in rather a vague sense by a lot of writers, but in physics it means a particular phenomenon, namely that in a nonlinear system, the outcome is often uh, indefinitely, arbitrarily sensitive to tiny changes in the initial condition. Mm -hmm. in per the perhaps even quantum mechanical fluctuations. Could, exactly. Perhaps mm -hmm. even qu little quantum mechanical fluctuations could be amplified mm -hmm. by the classical phenomenon of chaos to make very large uh, changes in the output. Mm -hmm. So that, since mm -hmm. you never know the input exactly, yeah. right. uh, that gives uh, a second source of indeterminacy. Mm -hmm. The third source is a very has been known for centuries and understood for centuries, and that is simply that in predicting things, one always has only partial information. Right. And uh, we can never I, make precise measurements, for example. In my rather naive remarks about free will, which are not the central theme of the book by mm -hmm. any means, I mentioned that pr probably all these sources of indeterminacy mm -hmm. contribute to our subjective impression of free will, and that it's most likely uh, more of the last kind than it is of the first kind. In other words, when we uh, act, when human beings act in certain ways and it seems that the acts are not predetermined and therefore there's an element of free will, uh, perhaps more likely we're acting from hidden motives mm -hmm. than because we have a random number generator, a quantum mechanical <laughs> random number generator concealed within us. But yeah. the main point I'm trying <laughs> to make is not my personal speculation about Mm -hmm. which of these is more important, but simply that I think questions like that can be phrased as scientific questions. Well, that's very important because for a long time, the, the very notion of consciousness or free will or mind was, was sort of considered an unscientific area to begin with. Yes, and it still is by many scientists, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, uh, a friend of mine who lives in this area and is very interested uh, calls it the C word. <laughs> In fact, mind he refers to as the M word, uh -huh. and many scientists don't want to use either of them. 
And how do you feel about that? Well, I think they're perfectly reasonable words that a scientist can employ. Mind, after all, is the name we give to the phenomenological aspects mm -hmm. of what the brain and related organs do. Uh, and consciousness is a real phenomenon, which we don't understand very well, but it's certainly there, it exists in human beings, and probably exists to some extent also in other organisms. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing it appears to be is uh, the following, that uh, thinking appears to be a parallel processing uh, operation mm -hmm. with many different strands, but at any moment, the spotlight of consciousness seems to be on some particular strand. Yes. So it's a sequential. Consciousness uh, seems to be sequential. Consciousness seems to, consciousness seems to be sequential, a, a spotlight mm -hmm. which is, sequ is sequentially focused on one thing after another in this set of parallel processing yes. strands. Whereas we, we know the thing. brain can process lots of things at once. Right, and some of that, I understand from psychologist friends, can be reduced to experimental mm -hmm. uh, uh, considerations. Uh, when you think you're listening to several conversations at once, they tell me, you may really simply be time sharing. That is, listening a little bit to this one, a little bit to that one. And since conversation is somewhat redundant, you can fill in a little bit between moments of attention. Right. And therefore, apparently follow several things at once, whereas mm -hmm. really you're switching back and forth. Like a time-sharing computer. Right. Mm -hmm. But, they say, if the uh, people are talking nonsense, then you can no longer do that. Uh -huh. <laughs> because the nonsense no longer allows interpolation. You can no longer track. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, uh, presumably it can be reduced to, to uh, in that way, to, mm -hmm. s to something experimental. Uh, but, uh, exactly what it is and how it works and so on, we don't know. Mm -hmm. But, it's reasonable to guess that since complex adaptive systems uh, probably are present on uh, planets scattered throughout the universe, in many, many different mm -hmm. parts of the universe, and uh, complex adaptive systems have the wonderful property of uh, exploring uh, new possibilities and trying out new possibilities and spawning new complex adaptive systems and so on, and that uh, most likely in very many places uh, they have produced uh, something like consciousness. Mm -hmm.